Welcome. Be sure to smash that subscribe button and get ready for drugs and bugs. Today we're going to be talking about the effects of fentanyl on blowfly development and the quantitation of fentanyl from insect tissue via catcher's extraction and LCMS analysis. Now I know that is a mouthful, but you're in for an adventure today. Forensic entomotoxicology is a very complex uh, subject. It focuses in on the developmental effects that tox toxins have on insects as well as the ability to use them as a toxicology matrix. To dig in first, we talk a little bit about what forensic entomology is. It's a study of insects and other arthropods during a criminal investigation. Predominantly used in investigations involving human corpses or determining the post-mortem interval. Beyond 48 hours after death, forensic entomology is the most reliable technique for determining PMI. And PMI is the minimum time required for these insects to develop. So they grow at a temperature dependent rate, which allows for PMI estimation. Shown here are, are a larvae and a pupa image with the stereo microscope. Insects develop at known stages as they progress through time. So temperature dependent growth allows for the estimation of these insects age if you know the conditions that they are growing in. So shown here is a life cycle of an insect of the specifically the Lucidocericata with a temperature held at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So the adult insects come and they colonize the body, they'll lay eggs after 24, 23 hours or so, these eggs will hatch, they'll emerge as first in star larvae, they'll begin to feed on the corpse, after 27 hours they become second in star larvae, so they'll molt and become a second in star. After 22 more hours they'll then molt and become a third in star, and then they will become a pupa after 130 hours. And then 143 hours later, they will emerge as adult flies. So held under these 70 degree temperature, they will emerge this many hours after. But drugs have been shown to affect this growth rate. So drugs in a body have been shown to either speed up or slow down development. This can influence postmortem interval estimation. Cocaine and methamphetamine have been shown to speed up the growth rates, with cocaine speeding up the growth rate by 36 to 76 hours, and methamphetamine speeding up the growth rate by 44 to 78 hours. Methamphetamine, morphine, and heroin have been shown to slow down the growth rate. And so the objectives of this study was to establish the detection and quantitation of fentanyl metabolized in the insect life stages reared on tissue fused with fentanyl, determine the effects of the presence of fentanyl on the growth rate of insects, and determine if there is any correlation between the tissue concentration and the concentration found in the insects themselves. So to do this, an extraction first needed to be developed as well as a design for the experiment. The extraction was validated by the ASB 036 and the design of the experiment focused in on physical characteristics as well as toxicology results from the insects themselves. So why fentanyl was chosen, chosen um, if you watch the opioid crisis, if not, check this link here, then you know that the opioid epidemic is a very big issue in the U.S. Specifically, shown here in 2019, there was a sharp rise in deaths overall total in the opioid, but specifically in the red line, synthetic opioids. Synthetic opioids increased from 3,000 to 36,000. Now, typical specimens for postmortem toxicology include blood, either central peripheral, liver, or other fluids and tissues and when there is advanced decomposition. So when there's advanced decomposition, uh, blood is not always available or sometimes it becomes coagulated and then so you're then just left with fluids. As well as insect specimens, um, drugs from cadavers can be incorporated into insect tissue and this can be a valuable tool especially when there's advanced decomposition. Because insect specimens can persist in the environment for long periods of time, they provide an additional matrix. So digging into the little bit of the method development uh, we're focusing on the, what the instrumentation was used, uh, optimization of the mass spec, optimization of the chromatography, extraction, validation by ASB 036, and then application to insect tissue. Instrumentation used is an Agilent 6470 with an Infinity 2 1290 auto sampler with an aqueous mobile phase and an organic mobile phase of methanol shown here. The transitions were optimized for fentanyl, 4-MV, beta-hydroxyfentanyl, and norfentanyl, and shown here are the three deuterated internal standards. LCMS chromatography, shown here is the 
chromatogram for norfentanyl, beta hydroxyfentanyl, 4 mvp and fentanyl at the lowest uh, chromatogram. And shown here is the elution gradient on the left. An important step for this process was the homogenization. So we took the insect tissue, either larvae or pupa, and a mixer mill MM200 with disposable steel balls that were solvent cleaned. So you take three steel balls, place them into the centrifuge tube, and pulverize them at a high rate to really grind up the tissue and to make the extraction possible. The catcher's extraction used stands for quick, easy, cheap, effective, rugged, and safe. The insect tissue is taken with catcher's salt, acetonitrile, IS, water, into the single tube, shown here as an example. Um, then mixed with, the mixed with the mixer mill and then centrifuge to create a distinctive layer. The top layer was then taken to dispersive SPE tubes for cleanup. And then centrifuged and the cypronatin was taken off. You see it's clear here. It was dried down, reconstituted, and then shot on the LCMS. For quantitation. Validation performed was an ASB036 validation, which includes interference studies, matrix effects, bias and precision studies, LOQ, LOD, and linearity, dilution integrity, and stability. However, for time's sake, we're only going to focus in on the matrix effects as well as bias and precision. So to select to show the selectivity in the interference study, um, we injected individual standards, a negative matrix, so the negative insect matrix, as well as an interference mix consisting of all of these analytes, different opioids, opiates, supplements, synthetic cannabinoids, stimulants, synthetic cannabinoids, and cannabinoids, to show that none of these will impact or interfere with the study. And then here are the matrix effects for the larvae, specifically at the low and high concentration. So this was performed um, in triplicate, or no, in uh, 10 replicates of each. So shown here are the mean suppression ion insemination suppression or enhancement and the limits are within plus or minus 20 percent is deemed acceptable so shown here the low and the high for the larvae were deemed acceptable and then bias and precision so within run bias I mean, within run precision with between run precision and bias were evaluated at three concentrations low medium and high um, and triplicate over five runs to be deemed acceptable the percent CV needed to be below 15%. As you see here, it's below 11% for all the analytes uh, across all three concentrations. And the between run was also below 13% uh, for all the analytes across all the matrices. For bias and precision, plus or minus 20% is deemed acceptable. And they did not exceed 10% uh, for bias. So there was the, the method was both precise um, and accurate. So the overall design um, it took 20 grams of tissue, of liver tissue, and spiked that with either um, concentrations of fentanyl or control, and then placed 50 to 60 eggs on them. After they were able to develop, we, char de we characterized the physical characters as well as the toxicology results. So here are the, the three treatments plus the control group. The control group had no, no fentanyl spiked in there. The low had 10 micrograms per kilogram. The medium had 100 micrograms per kilogram. And the high had one, 350 micrograms per kilogram. Um, the homogenized tissue had eggs placed on them. And then the insects were collected at day 4 and day 12. And length, width, and mass were evaluated. They were also taken for statistical analysis of the measurements and then for drug quantitation. And to evaluate the larvae, to liver concentration of fentanyl and metabolites. So shown here are the physical characters. This is how we measured it using a microscope. We used uh, uh, the scale here to digitally measure the insects. And shown here are the physical characters for larvae. So letters not connected by the same lever, letter are significantly different. So shown here, A and B are significantly different from C shown here. Same with here, A and B means that the low and the medium group were significantly different from the high and the control. And shown here. So this is for the length, width, and mass. So, so the control or the treatment groups of low and medium were significantly different from the control and the high. For the larvae. For the pupa, the low was significantly different from the control group. However, the high and the medium were not for length. For width, there was no significant difference. And then for the mass, the low was significantly different from the control. Now, this is interesting is it's significantly different higher. So with the low treatment group, the low treatment group actually grew better than the control group. 
So for mortality, there was a 21% mortality rate in the control group. However, you see in the larvae and the high treatment group, there was a 71% mortality rate, which could be reason why the, there was no significant difference in the physical characters because a lot of them died. So a lot of the insects that were placed died, as well as then in day 12, there was a high mortality rate in the high treatment group. So the insects that survived were able to grow more like the control group because uh, there was less of them. And then shown here is the percent pupated. Um, percent pupa for what was placed. 12% um, of the higher treatment group made it to pupa, whereas for the control group, 35% made it to pupa. For the drug analysis, we were able to detect fentanyl in the low, medium, and high of the larvae treatment groups for the larvae, and then for the pupa, we were able to detect fentanyl in the medium and the high treatment group. Norfentanil was only detected in the larvae and the high treatment group. Then in the pulled larvae, uh, fentanyl was detected in the low, medium, and high, as well as norfentanil was detected in both, in all three, the low, medium, and the high. And then the liver to larvae ratio showed that as they went across the treatment, the, the liver concentration to the larvae concentration was similar. So plotted there, here is the correlation plot for the liver concentration on the x-axis and the larvae concentration on the y-axis. There was a 0.75 uh, correlation between the concentration of liver to the concentration of larvae. So there was um, correlation between the liver concentration and the larvae concentration. However, it's not incredibly strong, um, but it is reason moderately strong. So in summary, this is a validated catcher extraction for larvae and pupa with applications to authentic insect specimens. Significant differences were found between the control and the treatment groups, especially for the low and the medium for larvae and the low for the pupa. Um, but the mortality, mortality rates for the high treatment were very high. A quantitation of fentanyl and metabolites from larvae and pupa was deemed possible, as we detected fentanyl in, in uh, all the specimens, as well as in the pulled samples we were able to see norfentanil. There was a moderate con co correlation between the liver concentration to larvae tissues, and we detected, we observed fentanyl metabolizing to norfentanil in the insects. Now, only fentanyl was spiked into the liver tissue, and no norfentanil was detected in the liver tissue that was extracted. So any metabolites, any norfentanils that was detected can be deemed to have been come from insect metabolism. So with that, I am taking any questions. As you see here, this is what forensic entomology is. The insects choosing who did it. Suspects. That's how it works. That's how forensic entomology works, right? I'm pretty sure that's how it's done. Thank you guys for tuning in. Be sure to smash that subscribe button. And follow Toxicology Tuesdays. Mad Scientist here, signing out.